Good morning and welcome to St. Mark's Episcopal Church and our online worship experience this Sunday, the 20th of September, 2020. You are most welcome here. We are back in our nave. It is a little dusty. I wonder if you pick that up on the camera. It's a little dusty and uh, a little bit uh, like we've had some workers in here and that is the case. You can't see, but uh, behind the camera is uh, still some scaffolding uh, up against um, the altars moved out and there's scaffolding so that the workers, when they come back in to put the tempered glass uh, coverings over all these windows, um, they have one last job to do inside, which is to seal the windows over the altar. Um, and so we're grateful for them, for their work, uh, grateful to the people of St. Mark's who helped make that possible. Uh, and I just thought it would be uh, exciting to be in here uh, with all the windows done, even if it's not quite cleaned up yet. And so um, I look forward to being in here over the course of the next um, months uh, to recording in here, maybe different locations. Uh, and then eventually when we get our streaming equipment up and going uh, to record uh, from our kind of typical worship places, which would be right here for me uh, during the Liturgy of the Word, the pulpit, uh, for uh, when I'm preaching my sermon and different things like that. So we look forward to all the different ways that our um, worship patterns might change over the next few months um, and most grateful to have this space. Uh, even though it is cooling down outside and it's, it would be nice to be outside again, I'm glad to be in here today. We begin our service this morning with our parish prayer. God of all, gracious and loving, we thank you for the diversity of your creation. Give us wisdom and strength to know your voice in the midst of the noise all around, so that we might see and serve you in one another and in our common life. Amen. We begin on page two of the bulletin. A link to the bulletin is sent each week with the Sunday service sheet, uh, with the Sunday email. Um, and so you can get uh, links to the bulletin, link, direct links to the service by going to stmarkslg.org slash connect and signing up for our email list there. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, 
but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Jonah, offered by Lector Ennis Silcox. When God saw what the people of Nineveh did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is this not what I have said when I was still in my own country? That is, why this, that is why I fled to Tarshish at the beginning, for I knew that you were a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life for, from me, for it is better for me to live, die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down at the east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to see what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and had made it come up over, jo up over Jonah to give shade over his head to save him from discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came upon the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush, so it withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind, and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah, so that he was faint and asked if he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right you should be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor in which you did not grow. It came into being in, in a night and perished in a night. I should not be concerned about Nineveh, the, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right from their left and also, and also many animals. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Psalm of the day is portions of Psalm 145 found at the top of page four. Let us say it together. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great kindness. Our second reading is from the Gospel according to Matthew, offered by Lector Becca Island. A reading from the Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers from his vineyard. After agreeing with laborers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. He went out about nine o'clock. He saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and at about three o'clock, he did the same. And at about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? And they said to him, because no one has hired us. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, call the laborers and give them the pay, beginning with the last and going to the first. When those hired at about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner and saying, these last worked only one hour and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. 
I choose to give this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be the first, and the first will be the last. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. What a terrible message, Jesus. Now, how are we ever going to learn to act right if you keep talking like this? You're trying to tell me that there were some folks who got up early at the crack of dawn those folks worked all day long, breaking their backs. And then there were some who came on later and later and later. Some even just an hour before quitting time. And you're trying to tell me that all of them, all of them got paid the same and the kingdom of heaven is like that? It's downright offensive. I work hard to be a good person. I work hard to overcome my faults and my deficiencies. I work hard. Or, or even worse. Think, think about a saint in our midst. There are many to choose from but I'll pick just one. We all know, we all know Joyce Odawan. She cooks for Meals on Wheels. She sits just about right over there. There is an extra helping of love in every meal that goes out of our church, straight from Joyce to the folks shut in their houses. And Jesus, let me get this straight. Jesus is trying to tell me that Joyce, lovely, wonderful Joyce, gets into heaven just the same as a scoundrel with a deathbed confession. Never mind me or you and our heavenly bona fides. That is the real crime in what Jesus is saying. Joyce deserves better. Don't you think? But, but she won't get better. At least not according to this story today. According to this story, we all get the same thing. According to this story, we all get heaven however long it takes us to get there. In the end, in the end, we all get the same results. It's a terrible message if the point of life is to get into heaven. It's an impossible message if the point of life is to accumulate possessions and wealth. Now, none of us really believe that. Not really. We all sometimes act that way, but none of us really believe it. There ain't no U-Hauls on the streets of gold. You can't take it with you. We all know the sayings. And they are true beyond a shadow of a doubt. It doesn't matter our wealth or our prestige or anything else. We all get the same thing in the end. Because in the end, the only thing that matters is the love of God. Which is not such a terrible message. It's actually a comforting thought. The only thing that matters is the love of God. What if that were true? What if God loves you 
You. No matter what. What if you tried and failed and God loved you anyway? What if you didn't even really try and God loved you anyway? What if God saves who God will and it turns out that God will save us all? That, that would feel great for a minute. That would feel great until we realize that if God loves me, no matter what, then that means God loves my enemy, no matter what. If God loves, no matter what, that means everybody. And suddenly we go from being comforted to being challenged, which which is probably right, because it sounds an awful lot like Jesus. Master, we have given up everything to follow you. What then will be our reward? That, that's Peter's question just before Jesus tells them this tricky story. And it's true, they have given up everything. So Jesus tells them all about rewards in the kingdom of heaven. All about how the owner, and we know who that is, don't we? About how the owner goes out seeking every last person, giving them their wages even a whole day's wage to the ones who worked only an hour. Which makes me wonder, what, what did the owner do the next day? Did he go out seeking still more? Or if he was wasteful enough to pay them all the same, would this owner be foolish enough to go out after sundown when the really seedy elements were out and about, the ones who slept off a bender during the day. Would he go out, this owner, and just start handing out wages even after the work is through? After all, what really is the difference between paying full wages for an hour's work and paying full wages for no work at all. We all get the same thing in the end. I have a friend who lives in California. One of the few joys of this pandemic is the fact that friends across the country feel almost as close as beloved people who live more nearby. Lately, we have been talking about the smoke and the fires in the American West and how awful it is. And then suddenly, other friends in D.C. and Rhode Island, they came onto the chat telling us about their hazy days and their low air quality. Because you see, the smoke from California rides the jet stream and makes its way across the continent. One of our friends said, I was feeling so bad for you, this friend in California. I was feeling so bad for you about your smoke. And now I realize it's not your smoke. It's our smoke. We all get the same thing in the end. God will not let us pretend that we are separate, not for long. We will try, we will divide ourselves, Republican and Democrat, rural and urban, West Coast and East Coast, sinner and saint. We will divide ourselves, 
but it cannot last forever. Eventually, no matter how separate we feel, eventually, we all reach the end of the day. Eventually, it's time for the wages to be given. Eventually, we are drawn together with the Master, the one who made us all. And we see that we were never separated at all. And after, after our wages are paid, as we spend what we have been given, I wonder if we will hear the Master out in the cool of the evening, just after sunset, when the day is past but the night not yet come, I wonder if we will be able to hear him going out again and again, seeking others, seeking more, seeking all that he can, seeking everyone until all are given their wage. Not what they deserve, but what the generous master wants to give. Eventually, eventually we will see that we are all just laborers in the vineyard. Every one of us. And we all get the same thing in the end. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Welcome back from the piece. A few announcements to highlight from our bulletin. First of all, um, in a couple of Wednesdays time, so that's a week and a half, not this coming Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, September the 30th, we'll have our St. Mark's Social Hour on Zoom. Uh, there are links to that um, in the Wednesday email that goes out on the 30th. Go ahead and download the Zoom app and uh, prepare yourself for that by having the Zoom app available. You can just click the link and it'll take you to the meeting but you have a better experience if you download the app onto your computer, your smartphone, or your tablet. So please do take advantage of that if you are able. Um, also, uh, coming up October the 4th is our St. Francis uh, Blessing of the Pets. And so even though we won't be quite ready to gather even outside uh, by October the 4th, um, we want to go ahead and have that opportunity to bless our animals, to bless our companions, the people who or the, the, the pets that walk this way with us. Um, I am grateful for my own Danny DeVito. You've seen pictures of him in um, the email. But please send in your pictures of pets. You can be in the picture. It can be just your pet. Uh, I've seen several really great ones so far. So please send those in along with your pet's name. And uh, we will include a compilation of those photos in our October the 4th service for St. Francis Day. Um, we uh, ask that those are turned in by Monday, September the 28th, so that we have time to uh, put those, so that I can have time to compile those into the video that will be released on October the 4th. Uh, we look forward to that. Also, uh, our Not Your Typical Sunday School continues. Uh, we have two groups meeting on Sunday morning. Uh, Sunday morning seems to be a great time to meet. Uh, we have others who are downloading the service and being part of or the, the class and being part of it that way. If, you would, if you've enjoyed the classes so far and want to join a group, then uh, please do just reply to any email that comes from the church and you can uh, be placed into a group, either one that meets on Sundays or some other time that is convenient. So please do get in touch with the church office for that. Um, next Sunday, the 27th, we look forward to uh, my good friend, the Reverend Dr. Adam Roberts, leading the class. I uh, look forward to what he has to say. Uh, as we answer and explore our uh, passage by answering and exploring those three questions. Who is God? Who are we? And what is God inviting us to do? 
One last announcement that I want to make before uh, the offertory. Um, coming up in the offertory, there's going to be a lot of pictures of our great folks who work on Meals on Wheels. I had been planning on doing this anyway, and then I got the good chance to embarrass Joyce in my sermon. And so uh, it's always fun uh, to rile her up that way, and I look forward to uh, her response after this service. She has no idea that this is happening um, until she watches it with you. Um, and so um, one thing I want to make note of is that our work with Meals on Wheels has continued throughout the pandemic. But what we don't have is that second Sunday offering where folks come in the door and place their check. A few people have mailed those in, but what we don't have is folks coming in the door and placing their check in the, um, the alms basin at the back of the church for Meals on Wheels. And the work for Meals on Wheels has continued, which means their, expensive, their expenses have not diminished. And so um, please do consider uh, sending in a check or a special donation. Go to the giving page on St. Mark's. You can do it electronically and give to Meals on Wheels. There's a, a choice that you can do in the wheel where you can select Meals on Wheels as the recipient of that particular gift. Uh, but please do consider making a donation. $5, $50, $500. Anything that you are able to give uh, will help that group uh, to serve meals uh, to the wider population of LaGrange. We serve 100 meals a week from this church, 100 meals a week. We have a great group of drivers and a great group of cooks. Those people have continued to come together. Uh, their work has gotten more difficult in the midst of this pandemic because they try to keep each other safe, but more fundamentally even than that, they're trying to keep our clients safe in their work. So please do consider supporting that work in whatever way you can by making whatever donation you can to that. Uh, like I said, go to the giving page and do it electronically or mail a check to the church office and just mark Meals on Wheels in the memo line. Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High. Let us bless our offerings. Holy God, creator of all that is good and gracious and true, we give thanks that we are able to offer to you out of the abundance you provide. Bless our offerings to the glory of your name that is love and faithfulness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This week, the prayers of the people are offered by intercessor Jane Frazier. The prayers of the people are form three. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob and Don, our bishops, and Alan, our rector. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. 
We pray for Donald, our president, Brian, our governor, Jim, our mayor, and our county commissioners and city councilors. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that our works might find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We pray for all of those we name silently or aloud. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for St. Mark's Kindergarten, Meals on Wheels, Phillips House Ministry, and all ministries at St. Mark's. We pray for administrators, teachers, students, and parents as they navigate education during this time. We pray for those in military service at home and abroad, especially Dustin, Lawson, Patrick, Kevin, Colin, Wayne, Will, and Galen. We pray for those who are on our parish prayer list, Beverly, Elaine, Nancy, Ruby Jane, Kathy, Owen, Sam, Clark, Julie, Lee, Karen, Scott, Don, John, Peggy, Bit, Gib, Marcia, and others whom we name silently or aloud. We pray for those who are celebrating birthdays this week, especially Max, Steve, Bob, Alice, Jory, Billy, Isabella, John, and Carol. We pray for those who are celebrating wedding anniversaries this week, especially Sid and Peggy. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good day and blessings. Mm -hmm.